Well, it's everything because at the end of the day, scripture is the norm that is not normed by any other norm. And so what scripture says and what it means is the bottom line in terms of determining what we think about sexuality. The problem is, is that there are some approaches to reading the scripture that are less than helpful. And one of the things that you encounter when you read about sexual ethics is that people will often uh, place a kind of a disjunction between the Apostle Paul and Jesus. And so they'll say, well, Jesus is saying one thing and Paul is saying another thing that doesn't agree with Jesus. Jesus is the peace-loving, sort of uh, um, non-sexually repressed uh, Messiah of the New Testament. And Paul is the sexually repressed, repressive, misogynist kind of a guy. And so they'll put Jesus and Paul into this kind of a hermeneutical cage match. And of course, when you do that, Jesus always wins. Well, what happens when you do that is that you lose so much of what the rest of the New Testament says about the purposes of our sexuality. And so really, if, if Jesus or Paul were standing here with us right now, they would not accept this contest because Jesus and Paul stand shoulder to shoulder on these things. They, they complement each other. They don't contradict each other. And so your hermeneutic has to take equally seriously the red letters of Scripture and the black letters. And unless you're doing that, your hermeneutic's falling short.